In order to properly assess the impact of your work and make informed management decisions, you will need to collect data, and likely lots of it. It's therefore crucial that you have a system in place that preserves, protects and prepares any data you collect for future use and analysis. At Blue Ventures, we have developed a data management process to help facilitate this. The process of managing your data can be broken down into four broad stages. Data collection, data entry, data sharing, and data analysis. Each of these stages serves its own unique purpose, but together they ensure that the data collected in the field is safe and can be used to analyze the impact of your current work and inform future efforts. In this lesson, we will explore what happens at each stage in the data management process and think about considerations for each stage. You may want to know how many octopus are caught every month in your local fishery. You may be interested in knowing how many people are using your health centre. You may even want to know how long the average boat trip takes. Regardless of what you're interested in, the first stage in the data management process will always be the same. Collecting data in the field. This video won't help you design your specific data collection or analysis methods, but it will help you identify some important considerations to think about whenever you collect data in the field. There's bark has been removed here. Anyone that collects data, we call data collectors. They are the backbone of the entire data management process and spend a significant amount of personal time and energy collecting data in the field, often in difficult conditions. Looking after this data is a continuous process, but it's the data collectors that are responsible for the quality and security of the data at this first point. When considering who should be a collector, you should determine who will be able to cope with the task. Data collectors should be trustworthy and hardworking. You don't want to use someone as a data collector who may choose to do the work quickly or carelessly at the expense of getting quality data. You will also need to think about the best ways you can protect and preserve your data. Some suggestions include numbering your workbooks. This is so you complete data in chronological order and don't get confused about where data is to be recorded when you start a new day. This also makes it easier to find at a later stage. Developing a data collection sheet with clear instructions, so your collectors can use the sheets in the field easily and write on them clearly. This also ensures that the way data is recorded is consistent between collectors. Having a physically safe place to store your numbered and completed workbooks, such as a plastic box or filing cabinet. Whatever you choose, make sure workbooks are kept dry and away from any insects or rodents that could potentially destroy your precious data. If your data collectors can ensure that data is being recorded clearly on data sheets, and that the physical workbooks are kept in a clean and safe environment, they will have laid good foundations for preserving data that took a great deal of time and effort to collect. Keeping the physical copies of your data safe is of course great, but it's no good just storing it away and forgetting about it. Unless you use that data to help you make decisions, it is pointless. The next stage in the process helps transfer the data from the workbook to a computer. This gives you both an additional layer of security over your data and also puts the data into a format that can be easily analyzed and checked using computer software. Data entry refers to any process that involves the replication of your written data into a digital format on your computer so it can be used. Sometimes data collectors make errors, but the process of entering the data into a special input sheet will help you identify and correct errors, ensuring the data that is entered into the computer is as accurate as possible and represents what was really recorded in the field. Data collectors may also be the people responsible for entering data, but it can be someone different. 
Once again, choose someone who will take care over the process to ensure the work is done well. After you have a record of your data on a computer, it should be stored in a backup. Uploading data online to a cloud server such as Google Drive provides the strongest level of security so far in the process. It may also be appropriate for you to share that data with others at this stage. Remember, any data collected by you remains your intellectual property. This means that it will always belong to you, and you can decide what you do with it and whether or not you want to share it. To share data, you can either upload it onto your own server and then provide access to each file, or upload the data directly to the servers of those you want to share with. Blue Ventures has secure data servers you can upload your data Doing this provides an additional layer of security over your data, as each file you upload will be replicated and stored in several different locations. If you choose to share and store your data on BV servers, Blue Ventures and only Blue Ventures will also be able to see your data and help with analysis later on. This could include giving feedback to you on how your conservation efforts are having an impact or helping you with future data collection design. Of course, it's up to you to decide whether or not you wish to share your data. Whatever you do decide, storing your data online is crucial and protects the data that has been collected from physical damage or loss. Just don't forget your password. The final part of the data management process involves analyzing your data. This means examining your data using statistical tools and programs, which can help you get information on the questions you originally set out to answer when you began collecting. To do this, you can use the data that was transferred to a computer and upload it, as it will already be in a good format for analysis and will have been checked for errors. The type of analysis you choose to carry out and the programs you use to perform the analysis will depend on who you want to share information with and what kind of information you're sharing. Will you be publishing in scientific journals to share lessons with the wider community? Are you using your data to write reports to help secure more funding? Or are you wanting to share the results with the community in order to share the benefits and challenges of their work? Your desired outputs will inform the type of analysis you'll need to carry out. So what are some common tools for data analysis? Tableau. Tableau is a data visualization software. Blue Ventures uses this to create graphs and analyses that are all in one, easy to access location and can automatically update when new data is added. We are able to create these data dashboards for all our partners and use it to produce data that is useful for feeding information back to communities, information you need for formal reports or any of your needs. Granting Blue Ventures access to your data can allow us to use Tableau with your data. Data Studio. If you would like to learn how to create visualizations and automatic analysis yourself, Google Data Studio is a free software that is easy to learn and would suit more complex analyses that you need to complete regularly. Excel. Excel is a software that most people have access to. It is a powerful tool and is particularly good for basic one-off analyses. It is also the software that you will enter your data onto the computer with. Your partner support technician can help you identify which tools you should use and help you navigate their use. The entire data management process is about preserving data collected in the field and recognizing the efforts put in by data collectors by putting systems in place that keep data safe and secure. This process will help you do that and unlocks the power of your data to inform your conservation efforts into the future.